Hey, hello again, friends and fans of Bob's Barn Workshop. I hope you're all having a good day. And hey, in the comments, let me know if you're a regular watcher. Let me know if you're just passing by and and uh, just saw this. Just but give me a comment or give me a like so I know who's out there. And if anybody, I'm right reaching people. But okay, what am I doing today? Well, you know this big, beautiful 67 Mustang convertible that is my wife's. You knew I've been having some engine trouble with it. So uh, we have decided that we are going to pull this 68 302 out, take her to the shop, get her bored and stroked, bring her up to a 347 stroker, put some AFR heads on it, bigger carburetor, bigger four barrel, get some more torque out of it, replace the clutch. But to do that, I usually put it in storage in fall and my timeline uh, of getting the machine shop to do the work uh, won't coincide with that. I, I miss my storage. So what I'm going to have, what I've been trying to do today, is get this side of the garage cleaned out. So when I get this ready, I can turn the car around backwards and push it way back in the corner for the winter. Put the corner on it while we're while she's out to get the engine rebuilt. I'm going to be do most of the work. We're just going to have the machinist. Uh, you know, bore and stroke the cylinders and do some clearancing in there for the crankshaft. And, uh, and I'm going to have him assemble the crankshaft in it. All right. Anyway, so to help move all this crap back to the barn where it belongs, I wanted to use my yard car. Well, um, again, third or fourth or tenth episode or so, three or four years ago, I put a regular ball trailer hitch on my lawn sweeper so I've got a ball on the back of my lawn tractor the wagon that I have still has this old-fashioned pin type hitch so what I'm doing today is I am going to put this two inch receiver not receiver uh, coupler two inch cup ball coupler on to my yard cart so that uh, it's a quick connect so I went over to, the, to uh, Tractor Supply and got the parts. And I'm working on my trailer so that I can get that refrigerator because we remodeled the kitchen. We got another. We got a new refrigerator and a new range. So this refrigerator and range want to go to the lake. To do that, I got to have my trailer. So my trailer's been off the road for two years. I've been farting around too much with it. So got to get the trailer done, but. I'm going to work on that this afternoon. So we got lots going on. It's going to be uh, putting the ball hitch on and maybe we'll throw in some of the trailer work. It probably will take too long so I'll make it into two videos. All right, let's take oh, it Oh yeah, you guys that are not regular followers, I have done rebuild projects on both this Baja Warrior mini bike in previous episodes. Uh, reworked the engine, welded up, fixed the frame, put on a new inch, quarter inch engine plate, uh, stage one kit, built my own header so I could put a muffler on it but still have a header, did some camoing, put an auxiliary tank so I got plenty of range. And then I bought this uh, Silver Fox Manco cart, which I put a 440 uh, 18 horsepower Duramax on it with a 40 series torque converter. Um, it had not good knobby Kendra tires on the back, so I left them alone. Kenda. And it also had the uh, lawn tractor seat when I bought it, and I thought that was pretty good. But, you know, I added the electric start, I added the tail lights, I added the headlights, I uh, put new shocks on it and modified the front end a little bit. New front tires, and of course I built the fenders on it, because we went to Busco Beach and it was a mud hole. So I've got brake lights too. Uh, so that was another project. If you want to look what I've done on this, I had quite a few episodes. I improved the rear disc brakes on it. So let's get to work in the oh, barn. Yeah. And if you're not a regular follower, I also bought this uh, 72 Super Beetle last summer that uh, is going to need some work on it. I'm thinking I'm going to lift the body this winter to check all the, the frame parts and get them all fixed up. It's in really good shape. It's just going to need a little patching. The engine runs great. Um, you know, 
heat ducts in the back seat are missing. Heater channels look good. But anyway, that's another story. All right. And I also, a couple weeks ago, just got my new Eastwood multifunction welder here. And I did a video on that, unboxing and testing it. All right, so let's bring the line card around here and get her fixed up. Yeah, I waited till uh, early afternoon so the sun was on the back side of the barn so I didn't have to work in the hot sun. It's summer, it's, it's August 12th, it's hot today. And let's see what else we gotta do here. We gotta get the old hitch pin thing out of the way. So, I'll see if I got my hammer thing. This thing is in such good, you know how old this is? I think this was like 1987-ish. When we bought this house in 87, it had nothing but electric heat. So, but it did have a chimney for a wood stove and they were using a, a wood furnace, but they'd taken it with them. So we, we, we put it in a wood furnace and we burned a lot of wood. This thing moved 100 tons of wood, at least 20, hun, hun, yeah, 20 tons every season. And, uh, and that was for 30 years. So that's 600 tons of wood this thing has moved. I did end up a couple years ago, probably more than a couple, putting the solid tires that don't have uh, tubes or air in them. They're like a hard foam. Never go flat. Let me know if you want to see me do a... Gosh, all it needs is a, some primer because there's hardly any scale on it. Sand it, prime it, repaint it. Make her pretty again. All right. Let's see what do we need here. Looks like we need a 9 sixteenths and a half inch. Or 7 eighths. See if I got my zippy tool in here. All righty. It's a weird combination of bolts in here. I must have lost one. One's a straight bolt. And uh, I think it's a 9 sixteenths. Of this with a ah, that was weird. The vibration got to me. Cry like a little girl. Um I don't know if I got any PB blaster. I need some blaster. Blaster of disaster. Oh, there it is. I might have to tack weld that or something, or chisel it. Oh, I need a bigger screwdriver, I think. That vibration was just weird. Years, I guess. All right. Well, I got 
got a chiseler. I can chisel it. Well, I got the 7 16 one out with a pipe wrench and a duplaze. Can I chisel that off? Look at a big chisel. Burn it off. Give a torch. Grind it off. There you go. Angle grinder. That's what I got. So I'm going to use. It's even got a slitting wheel in it. So. Easy as that. All right. So now we're back to square one. Start by about a three inch wide receiver because I knew that that frame was wide. I probably could have got away with a two and a half. But I was there. I didn't want to have to come back. It was two bucks more for the three inch and it just don't matter. Okay, tire apps. There you go. Instruction sheet for a receiver or for a coupler. I guess some people might need it. Let's go. Yeah, it's good I got three inch because that's what it is. Good, I got a hole in the front. I only got to drill one hole. And. Ba doom. Perfect. As Derek would say, perfect. Oops, that's too much. Perfect. Alright. We'll just line that guy up. drill out. All right. Can you believe how dry and hard the ground is here? Holy crap. Ah, there's a broken... There's the head. The old bolt. There's the old bolt. And we're just going to start drilling holes in here until we get up to the size we need. These don't have to be perfectly aligned or nothing like that there. Well, that bit's dull. Let's try. Super thick. Now that I got a hole started, she'll she'll drill pretty quick. I'll step one up here. Nineteen sixty four. That was a good year. Fourth, 
What do you say we go for the gusto next time, huh? Who doesn't beat the hell out of their 3 8 I'm going to put this on slow speed. On their drill bits. Right? Waller, as they call it. All right. Pretty much that's it. Bolt the sucker. Um. Hey, sucker. All right, I'm going to get a rag and wipe that off because it's covered with chips and oil. That's me. It's just the way I am. I'll put it through. This guy. Of course, that was clutter on the bottom. Yes, it was. I got nylock washers so that, or nuts, I mean, so I don't have to uh, use a lock washer. devices. Now I can just hitch up and drag this thing around. My trailer, my tractor has a ball on the back that I installed a couple years ago. What size is that going to be? Is that the size that I use? Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. with the wrench. Give me a little pipe wrench, isn't it cute? Now, I had to cut some of that off my other ball, so I'm going to do it here because it has a hard time clearing the frame, so you won't be able to see what I'm doing, of course. I gotta cut that to fit. Just a little bit. I know I'm not trying it, but I think I know from experience. Run like an old hog here. I think this will work. I'll just put it on the cardboard. Make sure we're down close to the ground. So I'm just just trimming that to fit. So I'm going to cut an angle off each edge, and then I'll.
There you go. It just didn't fit over the ball without running into the back of the frame. That's why I had to trim that lip back a little bit. We're going to let that cool off. I'm not going to be an idiot and grab a hold of it. Uh, I'll go get the tractor and bring it around. How do you like those tires? Remember last year when I put those? Right. Those are gnarly tires. out to the barn without busting my back. I got a lot of stuff to bring. All right, well, that's it bit for this little video, but this is a great idea to do at your own home if you have these uh, toe-behind accessories. All right, God bless. Take care. We'll see you next time. Well, I was wondering what else I could do today to entertain you. I hope it entertains you. That old tractor needs an oil change. It ain't getting one in a long time. So, I've been running it so it's warmed up. And, and, I'll uh, get up here. Planted it on, turn, uh, parked it on a little slant here, so. Why do, they, how, why do crescent wrenches always tighten up? I want to know that. Every turn, you have to re-loosen and tighten them, usually. All right. I extended this, put this little 90-degree fitting on here, as you can see it. Here, I'll crack the dipstick. That'll help her drain a little better. That's been in there for years. I feel really bad about being so lax about keeping it up. This engine runs like a beast. It's been running for many years. I think that's pretty level. I got it slanted uphill so it should all run to this side anyway. And the oil I'm putting back in is used, but it's only got 300 miles on it in my car and it looked just like fresh money when I let that damn wind. I took it out of the van. I did realize that I changed the oil in the van in June and I hardly drive the van. So, oh, a lot of oil in there. Maybe it has an oil pump system. It is a big V-twin uh, Kohler. Gee, it takes a lot of oil. I'm up to half a quart, or half a gallon almost. Must take at least three. I'm going to crank off the oil filter, too, and drain, just shake the oil out of it. Ugh. i got to go get my oil filter, oil filter and wrench. I'll be back. All right, well, that's finally dripping. It looks almost like it's half full. Oh, that's a gallon paint bucket. Here's the uh, oil filter. I'll splay you out a little bit. You're not quite too wacky here. And these are cool because they're just like a strap wrench. This is going to spill oil too. I might replace this. 
I think it's done dripping on the other side. I'm going to temporarily put the plug back in here. Not tighten it yet. And uh, put the catch bucket under this side. Try to keep this all over the ground. And I'm going to dump the oil out of it. Oh yeah, here she comes. What a mess. I'm just going to dump the nasty old oil out of this. This is an STP. Can't tell. My markings are too. S. Looks like 3314. 3314. Well, better than nothing, at least I dumped the crappy oil out of it. You only put those back on by hand. They get stuck when they're, they kind of get seized. So you never use a wrench on those guys. All right, I'm gonna make sure I tighten this plug back up good. It's like on the diff of your car or whatever else. Nice and snug. Don't overdo it. Now, I'm going to fill this up till it hits the line on this side. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I'm going to drive it up into the barn after. Alright, take right. two. I'm back from the auto store. And I got a new filter. Brand new filter. Take a little oil off in here. Lubricate the seal a little bit. And I'm not positive this is exactly the same number. But the gasket and the threads and everything are all the same size. So how much different can it be? There's my 716s I was looking for. Daddy came out to visit me. All right, so we got that in there. And let's see what we got here. All right. I see cop cars parked all over because you know us Trump supporters were all desperados.
and I didn't put the plug in. smoke a little bit if she's overfilled anyway. I've seen that. Let's start her up. It'll take some of the oil into the, into the uh, oil filter that's empty right now. Not much. That's one of those small. So it's going to read high. We're on a little bit of a slope here. Oh yeah, I see the pulse pump for the fuel coming off the uh, coming off from the air cover, the valve cover. I mean, all right. It's really hard to see. Yeah, now it's reading just a hair high, and it's tilted. So. We're good. And that was a 36.14 was the only closest thing I could find. And uh, I think maybe that's what it was, but it's really hard to read the printing on the old filter. I put that in there just in case. I don't know if I'll ever. So that's all there is to that new filter. Pull the drain plug just like a car, but it only took two quarts instead of five. And like all the amount I thought. So, okay, another quickie. Take care, God bless. Bob's Barn Workshop.